Marco Royce. Daniel Marlon! Wonderful! Fantastic from Royce. Jude Bellingham. That's excellent. Jude Bellingham. This is absolutely brilliant. Jude Bellingham! Absolutely magnificent. Rina. Brilliant from the American. Just like that. Graceful. Sally Hood's down for Anthony Modest. Wolf. Not a bad idea. And there it is for Coco. For Borussia Dortmund. The long wait is over. Unbridled joy in the Via Daly. Hey, welcome to the BVB podcast. My name's Jake, joined as always by Carver. Uh, I know, Carver, you're a little sleepy getting wrecked by allergies but other than that how are, how are you doing it's the perfect medium for something like this no one's gonna see me i mean i'm gonna sound pretty stuffy so apologies if i'm coming across like that but yeah i mean it's it's kind of like the pollening i like to call it you know <laughs> it's it's beautiful weather outside and you're like wow spring's here all right and then you get hit with reality if you're someone like me who just off the charts with these allergies. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been kind of a nightmare these past few days, but um, I'm hanging in there. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm here for the ride. How are you doing? I mean, I was going to say this is, I forgot to tell you, this is the week we're going live. I'm recording the video of this. Yeah. This yeah. We're gonna post it. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. I am also tired and sleepy. Uh, got to rightfully so tra- travel on the road over the weekend pretty pretty exciting we don't really need to get into that because this is a Dortmund podcast um and Berkey is no longer a Dortmund player that's all I'm gonna say uh but no it was it was awesome it was an awesome time traveling and uh although it was a lot of like we flew back right after the game that night so it was a late night what time did you guys <laughs> get in got back at like 2 two thirty. that's what I was imagining yeah it'd probably be it, about 2 a.m and that was in the the central that's uh we're still in we're in austin so those central time zones so uh in a couple weeks we're going up portland and that's gonna be a long flight back (laughs) even later so that'll be fun (laughs) yay um but no it was it was awesome and uh it's been really fun and crazy and this weekend's gonna be crazy too and if you have no idea what (laughs) carver and i are talking about uh, if you're new welcome thanks for hanging out listening we'll quit being mysterious but carver and i live in st louis our new soccer club st louis city sc Home opener this Saturday. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be Kicked crazy. Kicked the shit out of Austin. That was a fun game. It was it was historic and we're both, yeah, very fortunate enough to, um, well, you gave me tickets for the home opener. I don't know why I'm trying. <laughs> I, I couldn't afford because they were ex- insanely expensive for the first game. So, could not thank you enough for that and I'm really, really looking forward to Saturday. Uh, I hope I'm going to be alive by then because... <laughs> Every day since these allergies have hit, I'm just, I don't have any energy whatsoever, but. <laughs> also, I guess this all does tie in because um, it looks like we're going to be, we'll have another uh, like special episode with Manuel Veth who will be back in St. Louis for the match. And if that doesn't happen, I'm sorry, I might have teased something that might not happen. I think it's moving forward. I was going to say, we, we should probably be a little bit more discreet with that. Just I talked to <laughs> Phil a little bit more today and we're still trying to lock down a place. But yeah, either way, Manuel will be here. Get to chat with him a little bit, yeah. whether it's going to be recorded in St. Louis. or not. I don't know. But if, you, if you're here in town, you can come and talk to him. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll just have a photo instead of a, a recording, mm. but who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, but anyways, yeah, well, let's uh, get into Dorman. You said you're tired, uh, so maybe we'll do a shorter episode. And it, I mean, what do we have to say, really? Like, Dortmund just wins again. Kind of, That's kind of it. Like, is there anything else to talk about? Dortmund wins again. <laughs> nope. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Four for minute episode. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, nine and nine now. Th- this is, again, no one would have ever dreamt this up in their wildest dreams of a uh, return like this after the calendar year, uh, whether it's on a collective uh, level and an individual level, the team is just really overperforming right now. And we are still neck and neck with Bayern tired with them on points away at Hoffenheim this past weekend. It's, it's a tough ask, even though they're uh, unlike us, they're, they're not, meeting their expectations whatsoever. They're uh, kind of in a relegation battle at the moment, especially after the the big L they picked up to us or from us over the weekend. But uh, it was it was a tough one and, and we got three points and got out of there. Uh, would you want to go over the lineup? Did you have that on there or do you want me to run through it? 
Uh, yeah, I've got it pulled up. So, I mean, the big talk beforehand from the like uh, commentators was we made five changes. Some of those due to injury and guys being out uh, and talking about depth, which is great. Like we're able to make five changes in the starting lineup still looked like a pretty solid starting lineup even with that. I mean, it helped that. Um, I mean, one of the guys coming back in was Guerrero, Bellingham, like these guys who were more taking a rest last week. Um, so we saw Guerrero out at left back again, Schlotterbeck, Unsule, our two center backs. Wolf went into right back. I believe Rierson was out. I don't know if he was sick again or what it was exactly, but there was news that he was going to be out before uh, the match. So that one wasn't a surprise. Um, Cole bowling goal, obviously. Then we had uh, Bellingham and Chan, Bino Gittens, Royce and Brandt and Haller up top, which um, what I was just reading off Fop Mob, which is to, said 4-2-3-1 before the match on the ESPN. They were saying a, a 4-1-4-1, but uh, with, with Chan, what we've been seeing anyways, like with, with Chan sitting in that sixth position, whether it's 4 one 4 like he drops back and we kind of switch to a a three, four, three at times. I mean, it's all, we talked about formations a lot last week. It's all yeah. rotating. Uh, it changes around a lot, but that was our lineup. Still pretty so- strong. Uh, got to see Bino getting, get the start. A lot of that is kind of because the Adeyemi injury. Um, little surprised it was Bino Gittins over Reyna. I don't know if you had any thoughts on on that or him starting or any thoughts on the lineup, I guess. Yeah, I want to go back to Chan. That's what I wanted to start with. But we can talk about Reyna real quick. And I know some people, I guess, that aren't paying too much attention to Dortmund are starting to be a little concerned of just his playing time is kind of being transferred over from the national team to now club despite his contributions off the bench. Uh, I, I, we haven't really heard of anything if it's, you know, anything off the pitch that's going on right now. I think it's just with a team that's in red hot form, you know, you're going to go with the hot hand and there are team or there are players that have took their, taken their chances these past few weeks. I mean, Reyna started against Bremen and didn't do too much, unfortunately. And then JBG comes on and that's one. Adeyemi's been insane. Of course, he picked up a knock, but I mean, players like Brandt too. I mean, these are all positions that Reyna kind of plays in. Royce coming back as well. You can keep going down the list. So, uh, it's not really a thing of Reyna having any sort of controversy as much as, as much as it is just simply the coach kind of favoring people that are taking their chances at the moment. Um, but going yeah, back to Chan, I mean, I, go ahead. R- real quick, just on the Reyna, it, like mm-hmm. it could be from that Werder Bremen game, like you mentioned, where Reyna did get the start. Um, and... Then it was Jamie Bino Gittens who subbed on for him and he scored. So it might have literally been that uh, that moment is what kind of solidified. Like, okay, let me give JBG a start now. And it's not to say it was over Reyna. It's like Reyna, maybe he's like testing both of them out, it kind of seems mm-hmm. like. Um, and so this time, uh, JBG got the chance. Yeah. Uh, so going back to Chan, I mean, we've been, or I've been mentioning the past few weeks of <clears throat> if you were to pick three players in this team, who do you think? would arguably be the most important out of this calendar year. And I, and I came up with a Coble, Brant, and Adeyemi. It's probably my top three. And Chan is really making an argument to be slipping into that top three, if not, you know, almost make it into a uh, best top four players of this calendar year so far for Dortmund. I mean, he's been phenomenal in that six role. He's been, he's been breaking up play. He's been uh, tracking back, of course. This game alone, he won six... Out of his seven ground duels, he won all four aerial duels. He had eight recoveries. Again, broke up play, supported the attack, brought some muscle and grit into the midfield. Uh, He's he's a lot more calm and collected than he's been uh, looking in previous years. Like I mentioned before, he's not as hot-headed with uh, fouls or calls that go against him. So, cannot praise his performances enough. Again, I've mentioned this before, but he kind of goes in these cycles of, you know, playing at a pretty high level and then get some calls that go against him, And then he starts to fall back into his form and then taken out of the starting 11. And then a few months go by and it kind of repeats, but right now we're riding that high again. And maybe it's a turn of a new leaf and he's, uh, you know, here to stay with the starting 11 because Terzik is obviously fancying him. We're not going to be extending with the So I think we're going to continue looking into more pure number sixes like Chan and, um, I mean, he's he's been making our team look really, really solid defensively, offensively, you name it, on and off the ball. Chan's been really doing everything. So, uh, big props to him for this support performance. I thought he was the man of the match against Hoffenheim. 
And I mean, before the season started, we were wondering if Chan was even going to be here. Yeah. Uh, how much of a role he would play. Uh, just because those like in, you said fa- like phases or whatever, like he, he goes through the or cycles. Um, mm-hmm. And he's in a good cycle right now. And hopefully it, it sticks around. And I, I want to be surprised if part of this is uh, with Oshan coming in. And obviously first half of the season, we're seeing Oshan uh, get the start time and time again with, with some really good performances. But this is what you want. You want to bring in guys who have competition uh, so that they step up and they push each other. And I think that's what we're kind of seeing from Chan because uh, he knows if if he slips up or anything, like Oshan is going to come right in, right back in probably. Um, so he's he's fighting for a spot. He's earning it week after week, um, which is just adds to the depth. It's like everyone's healthy, not for the most part. Uh, we, we got we have some depth. We have good players competing for spots, uh, and I like we're seeing the the fruits of that too, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I thought Chan did really well. Uh, there's a handful of other good performances, but we can get to that. But starting out the game, very open and lively first 20 or so minutes. It was pretty back and forth. Uh, both play, or both teams wanting to assert their dominance. And Hoffenheim came out of the gates defending pretty well. I mean, definitely for that first 20, 30 minutes, I mean, they pressed well. Uh, they, they defended well as a team. Um, made it difficult for us to kind of uh, get the ball rolling at times. I mean, Bauman... Uh, their goalkeeper is, has been a godsend for them this game. He had 11 saves for Hoffenheim. Uh, we had, I think we had, yeah, 25 shots this game, and 11 of them were on target. And he had 11 saves. It was just, or 12 shots, excuse me. And 11 of them were saved by Bauman. So, I mean, he was insane. That was pretty annoying. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Hoffenheim came out well and, and, and defended well those first 20 or 30 minutes. But I think we were doing a good job of breaking them down as the half went on. It made it hard for them to defend as a team with the quick switches of play. Uh, gave me kind of like vibes of back in the day with Klopp. If, uh, you know, whether it's the fullbacks or the wingers real quick switching the play or Jude progressing the ball and switching the play real quick and almost having that dizzying effect for the opposition so they can't defend well as a team. Um, and ultimately scored off another set piece yet again. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it is just crazy to me how we are a completely different team with set pieces. I mean, that has been a problem for at least, at least six years, in my opinion, of us consistently not scoring and us consistently not defending on set pieces. And now we've had, I should have had the stat pulled up in front of me, but I think we've scored like from a set piece in like at least six or seven of these nine games so far in this calendar year. <clears throat> alone excuse me you got a good glimpse of my allergies there <laughs> voice started to give out a bit there hold on fellas i'm still here um, <laughs> um but it was, i mean it was, it was a good set piece i mean royce drove it in with some pace uh, i thought it was hilarious that it came off brant's back right whenever it goes in the net and all the players kind of huddle together you're looking at all of them and they're all like looking at each other like did you hit that in? No. Oh, okay. Did did you hit that in? And Brent's like, I think it, I think it was off my back. <laughs> that was yeah. The Wolf just takes off running like, like he got a touch on it and like he put it in and he yeah. might have got touched because I watched it a couple times. I still like can't figure it out. I mean, I saw it go off Brant's back, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he got a slight touch and was taking credit running off like he's celebrating. But yeah, Brant's like, no, uh, pretty sure that bounced off my back. And maybe, maybe it's a little play on uh, carrying the team on his back, which I don't think he is. I think it, it's been yeah. a, a good team effort, but he's definitely been cruising. He's got eight goals now, uh, four and four, which the debate before was, can he do three and three? And he did that. Now he's got four and four. Mm-hmm. Um, eight goals on the season. Yeah, looking real, real good for and Brant it, and everybody. It, that's uh, the touch off his back. Obviously, you could call it a little fortunate, but again, 25 shots this game from Dortmund alone. Uh, half of those were on target, so it's not like we didn't, you know, deserve some sort of result in the first half. And we had an XG of 2.5 this game, uh, and it really just kind of came down to a game of two goalkeepers. One of those games where, you know, both both uh, keepers are at the top of their game, making save after save after save. I mentioned Bauman already with the 11, but Kobel already uh, as well. And we had scares at the back, particularly kind of in the first half and a bit too in the second half, and he came up big as well. He had four saves this game, all of them very solid. 
uh, you know, certain his dominance in the box as well, continuing to uh, just show his class. So, you know, I was, I was very impressed with uh, Kobo's performance as well. Um, there was the, any- the chance in the 16th minute um, where the ball was kind of bobbling around a little bit, like Schlotterbeck got in there and like slid in and, and saved it, like got a tackle. But then um, Kobo was able, like kind of off balance, fallen backwards, able to steal. The ball was like floating over. I don't remember how it exactly played out, but mm-hmm. you know, it was like floating over and Kobo was able to get a hand on it and push it over the net as he's like falling backwards. Um, and so again, just like good on him, good on Schlotterback too. I, th- I thought uh, he was pretty solid. Um, he even like, I think it was right before Brant's goal, he had one like was across the the box off a corner kick again, like just looking dangerous on corners uh, and set pieces like those were right after each other. That corner kick that or the the free kick came immediately after this corner kick where Haller headed it across. But uh, yeah, I thought there's some good defensive moments like that where we kind of stepped it up where you would have seen us make those mistakes before. Like it might have been a little sloppy, but we were able to to maintain and whether it's on. Cobalt keeping it out of the net eventually or just some happenstance defense uh, working out like I don't know I just there were a lot of moments where I was like this is where we typically make a mistake and we were able to handle it this time yeah and uh, second half I mean it's pretty much the same story you had the unfortunate uh, goal called back from Wolf I was tweeting how happy, I mean, I, I thought Wolf had a great game as well, but I mean, it was a great run forward. It was a terrific shot. One of my, it would have been one of my favorite goals of the season, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, it was an absolute laser into the top right corner in the uh, near post, right where the spiders live. And yeah, unfortunate to be called back. And yeah, the, the referee goes and looks at the VAR and it's like a minute and a half before with the the trip from Schlutterbeck. Unfortunately, it, it, it was a foul, but it's just like, oh, for sake of course like this is going to get called back and then i was starting to think in the back of my head like now hoffenheim are going to somehow start to use that to motivate them a little bit and maybe try to bag one back but we had a good job of uh just continuing to build on that pressure and you know get the result yeah well i know we've been talking about wolf a lot especially in the later episodes but i'm gonna keep i'm i'm gonna like stop apologizing anytime i repeat hyping players up because it's like if they play another game if they do well again, I'm just going to keep talking about them because why not? Yeah. I want to I want to <laughs> praise them and, and shout them out and stuff. Um, and we're talking about we've talked about Wolf kind of being the go to right back, which obviously we have Rierson. Um, but we've seen this kind of rotation where Rierson will go out on the left or Wolf been out on the left a couple times. But we we like he's been such a solid fullback for us. Like we've always talked how he's just like a utility man. You can play him anywhere yeah uh, but he's been so good at fullback and it's like if we need him if we need that depth up top we can put him as a winger but to have him perform so consistently in the the, the fullback position has been great and he he does have that shot like we've seen him score those goals where it's just super powerful super accurate kind of out of nowhere he's kind of just flying through and like lets it rip you know what i mean gets on the end of something mm-hmm. and it's great and that's kind of the the goals you'd expect from a fullback not necessarily like I don't know, power slap shot or whatever, but like kind of coming out of nowhere, following it up and, and being there and, and picking up a few goals here and there. Like that's that's what you need. I think in, in like how football's played today, like you need these goals to come from everywhere, even your fullbacks, especially when they're getting up so high. Uh, but not not just like that shot. Like he had some great crosses in. Uh, There's one to Haller that I remember that I think also led to another corner, uh, maybe just before that free kick. It might've been that same uh, run of play, but... Yeah, just solid, solid. I'll I'll take Wolf at right back anytime. I I was not taking away anything from Rierson, um, but it's great that we we have all these options now. Yeah, I personally I think Wolf is our right back at the moment. I think that's his position to take, and it, just like you said, no disrespect uh, to Rierson by any means, but uh, Rierson can obviously play left or right, and and I think Wolf, you know, you can play him on the left, but. He obviously looks much, much more comfortable on the right. And uh, Rearson, you can, you know, kind of plug in here and there if, if players are injured or just also if we're needing a player of fresh legs to come out towards in the game and, and um, lock up a win. So, yeah, very happy with Wolf in this performance. Uh, Malin came in 60th minute, didn't really do much. Unfortunately, he was pretty disappointing. I was hoping we were going to see uh, Reyna come on as a sub here, but... 
I'm imagining it's just like we were talking about earlier, Malin got the got the nod because he scored in the previous game against Berlin, but yeah, he couldn't really do much with his chance, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, in the end, got the win. Nine out of nine now. It's uh, the best start to a calendar year in Dortmund history. So there was another historic win. Again, tied with Bayern on points. And it's it just makes me even more nervous for going into this weekend or this Friday specifically against Leipzig. This is what I wanted to talk about. Did you have anything else before Hoffen- or for Hoffenheim before we move on? Not on Hoffenheim, but just just that Dortmund is the best team in 2023. The, and, yeah, they are. And this came up with just some friends and like coworkers were talking soccer and someone brought up Real Madrid after the Liverpool thing. And I was like, before I said anything, I'm like, let me look up. Let me Before I just jump in here and start yelling at everybody, I was like, let me look up Real Madrid's record in 2023 they've lost like a, a couple games yeah um and then uh someone else mentioned i was like oh be- you know who the best team of 2023 is and they're like man united because they're just a bit big man <laughs> fan and super hyped <laughs> which i get it man united has been great eric ten Hag has been great everyone was dumb for writing them off super early but just like ripping about man united i was like you know who actually hasn't lost in 2023 Dorman. you're welcome yeah enjoy it Ugh. I, I mean I'm, I'm enjoying it Slap in the face to everybody else. I mean, United have three ties since the calendar year and also a loss as well. And Dortmund have none of those. Again, all nine games, all nine wins. So it's it's not even really it, it's just it's just a matter of fact. That's what we're talking about here. Facts over feelings. Am I right, fellas? Uh Dortmund I mean, continue go ahead. I have not I have not looked up the stats or the records of every single team in twenty twenty three. Uh, maybe we should do that. Maybe I need to do that next time when we win again and I try to bring up this fact again that we're st- still undefeated. Well, we, we, are, we are still the only team in the, t- at least in the top, top five, definitely in the that, top five yeah. uh, European leagues. And I think even top 10, if I'm not wrong, uh, European leagues that uh, are still won every single game and we're at 100% so far. So it's, it's uh, not really even up for debate how th- uh, Dortmund is the best team right now. And the only, I just looked up uh, Wrexham because it wanted to surprise me, but they've drawn a game. Um, and I'm looking up Again, Sheffield, Salzburg. Sure. Salzburg is the only other one where I'm like, they, it's a chance that they haven't. Nope, they just lost to Roma cause in the Europa League or something. So, nope. Yeah. We're taking it. Best team in the world. And it's stop the count. Stop the count. No, don't stop the count because then we would still lose the point. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we, we need a few more points. Yeah. And of course, that record is really going to be tested this Friday against Leipzig. We are back at home. It's a game during the day here. Um, well, I mean, of course, later at night in Dortmund, but an afternoon game here in the States. Uh, the last three meetings against Leipzig, Leipzig have won all three. Each have been pretty rough, to be honest with you. I mean, before just going back into the fall, we lost 3 0 away. I mean, that game was pretty horrendous. They were exploiting space and behind and on the flanks from the likes of Werner. They were abusing their pace. Uh, we were missing key players in that game as well. I mean, Haller obviously was not there. We didn't have Koble for that game. Adeyemi was absent. I mean, he's going to be absent this time too, unfortunately. But three big names, of course, in that game that we did not have. Um, it's it's, it's going to be a really tough one. I mean, we, we looked sloppy and sluggish these past few meetings with Leipzig. Um, I'm expecting a pretty open game. Of course, Rosa is, is his reunion back in front of the yellow wall. Um, I'm expecting Leipzig to come out and press pretty high. Conrad Leimer really did a number on us last year at home, uh, pressing really high, limiting our touches and build up. Uh, just waiting for Chan to make mistakes and just pouncing on him. So we kind of collapsed pretty quickly last time at home. And I'm hoping we're going to be a lot more stable, of course, mentally and physically and uh, have a little bit more structure with our play. Chan is in a whole different mindset and a whole different level in his game. So I'm thinking those mistakes are going to be minimized. Our defense looks much better. Of course, we have Haller back now. We have Koble back. No way to yummy, but uh, we still got some pace in the wings. Um, but either way, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, again, Leipzig have won last th- or the three last meetings against them. Uh, they've been in red hot form since Rosa took over. They've only had one loss since September. That was recently against Union. 
And um, I mean, they even tied against City too in the Champions League about a week ago and just recently picked up a win against Frankfurt as well. So um, it, it's going to be tough. Yeah, the the City result is... Uh... I mean, that was a, a good performance by them to to be able to come back and uh, tie it up like towards the end of the match, especially against a, a team like City who just kind of breaks you down and with all their their passing and everything, um, and like kind of just wears you out. Like you're constantly chasing the ball. So to score a late goal against City, pretty impressive performance. And yeah, the last game uh, our away game at Leipzig was it was not pretty in it. <laughs> that was the game where I think because our season wasn't going great. Of course, coming up against our old coach, like that was the game we needed to win. Like we needed to feel some confidence. We needed to feel like maybe it's okay that we sacked Rosa and we're moving along with Terzic. Yeah, they just, they just tore us to shreds. Um, but I'm I'm feeling good. I feel like the team has this confidence and I don't, maybe it's because we haven't lost yet, but I don't feel like it's an overconfidence that's a hindrance. Like we're, we're just playing so well and we, we have a lot of different players performing. Like you said, Chan, like who... At the beginning of this season, we didn't think we'd have Chan performing at such a high level. And and other guys have, have stepped up too. And we have that depth. And we have these options. So maybe I'm overly confident, but I'm I just see the players being just as fired up for this game as they've been for the other ones, but this one even more so because they're gonna want want to get the the win and kind of some like redemption from from that last match. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 Really, too, I mean, also the set pieces I've mentioned, I touched on it for a second, but I mean, we're a completely different team with those as well. I mean, the first goal we conceded against Leipzig in the fall was via set piece from just poor marking, and I think we're gonna we're doing a lot more uh, better with that sort of thing. Of course, we're uh, a lot more organized, we're dangerous and idealistic in and in attack with set pieces. So, um, I mean, that's, that's a completely different look from this team. <laughs> Um, I'm feeling good as well. I think I just hope we can, you know, rise to the challenge. We're not going to sit off and, and give them any space. And hopefully they're not going to um, uh, make us or force us into many mistakes as well, which I've mentioned already. But um, I'm really hoping that we can we can get a result over Rosa. I mean, it's that would that would really sting if we he did the double on us. And of course, that would be four meetings in a row then uh, that that Leipzig have won over Dortmund. So. Um, I'm just looking to crush some cans, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tie it back to St. Louis for a second. One thing I, I hate hearing, uh, like I I get I get it, um, but they they keep saying like the energy drink style of play and I'm like, yeah. oh God. Like I was referencing the New York and with Brittany yeah. Cornell. And- but it, the thing that frustrates me is I just I don't know it's it's more like I get it like the Red Bull system I get that and I get what they're referencing and because it crosses over to New York like that's the connection point Bradley Carnell has been at New York um, and, and that but it's just like uh, so many German teams play this like pressing style and counter pressing style and I just hate when they I don't know I hate when they're like the energy drink team and I'm like or the the second energy drink team it's just it, it, irritates yeah, me. It, it, of course it references to New York but it couldn't be more polar opposite of what you know, today's market is with like the Red Bull, whatever teams and, and these, and these, you know, teams like to full of money that are climbing their way to the top and just a matter of years or uh, whatever. And of course the roots go deep, deep into St. Louis back to the fifties. So it's, yeah, it, it frustrates me too. And, Cause I, I can get what they're saying, but it's like, all right, that's enough. And, you know, hopefully we're proven, we're going to continue to prove people wrong in that sense. Cause it was a great game versus Austin. But anyway, <laughs> That's that's well, St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I I think part of it just because the in like Bundesliga culture, it's like people say that as a joke. Like the yeah. you know what I mean they use the energy drink team as a, a joke, but here it's more of like a style. Like in the U.S., people say it as a style, and so I'm like have the Bundesliga mindset where it's like I just hear energy drink team and I hate it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, do you have a prediction? For this Friday, so kickoff uh, Friday, two thirty Eastern time. I'm gonna I'm gonna predict a goal fest, and I'm gonna say three two Dortmund. It's gonna go. All right. We're gonna concede early. Unfortunately, we're gonna uh, score two. After that, then they're gonna get one back in the second half, and then probably run the seventy fifth, eightieth minute. We're gonna get a winner. And then the camera's like gonna it. cut right to Rosa, and he's just gonna be given his like classic like open mouth. 
I like it. I'm going 3-1. I'm feeling, like I said, maybe overly confident. Um, I think we're going to play significantly better than the last last time, and I think we're just going to boss it, and I, I'm feeling confident. So I'm going 3-1. Uh, do you want to talk about Chelsea at all? Because uh, we're back in action in the Champions League. Um, Tuesday, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Um, so I don't know. We haven't really figured it out yet if we're going to record before or after the Chelsea match, but do you want to give a little Chelsea preview? Yeah, if you want some entertainment, I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar with Rory Jennings. He's a, uh, I guess you could call him a pundit, but he's a you know YouTuber and he's also obviously a very diehard Chelsea fan. And he has uploaded, I shit you not, probably a half dozen videos in the last three weeks alone, all titled Sack Graham Potter or Graham Potter needs to be sacked now or, you know, whatever. Um, and just the entire Chelsea fan base is in a complete meltdown right now of just... I mean, I, I don't really buy this, but Rory Jennings says Chelsea are in a legitimate battle with relegation if Graham Potter is not sacked. They sit 10th in the Premier League right now. They have nine losses and only eight wins. They're struggling to score any sort of goals. I mean, I, I mentioned last time, I think they've scored one goal in their last eight games, or excuse me, six six games. They have uh, also have not won since January 15th. And then before that, it was December. So, I mean, Chelsea are really, really struggling right now, especially away from home. Of course, they're going to be at home this game. But I mean, even then, their their form is really piss poor. I mean, just last week, they had they hosted Southampton, who are at the bottom of the table right now. And uh, they, they grabbed one in the 45th minute and, uh, and one at, at Chelsea. So, I, I feel great in the Champions League. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm more focused on the Bundesliga for just this weekend. And, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be easy against Chelsea by any means, but, you know, when it comes to a draw uh, for that, you know, knockout stage round, I think we couldn't have gotten really a luckier draw. And I'm, I'm more, hap- more than happy to beat a team like that that, you know, spends 600 million plus in just a few months. Yeah, I didn't even realize the, I have their, like, recent results pulled up i didn't even realize that they lost to southampton mm-hmm. uh, also so yeah and then spurs of course great. too i know you like spurs i mean i, I did i did see that one yep yep <laughs> so um, I mean, grand potter just cannot figure many things out uh you can look at like the xg uh that he had even at brighton and it kind of matches up to what he has right now uh it's just he's a coach that does can give the players confidence to get into these sort of positions but i guess he doesn't really have the I don't know. I'm no. I'm no tactical uh, expert by any means, but maybe just doesn't have the forward thinking ability to get those goals and actually, you know, convert these things into results. Because again, they are struggling to score goals. They're struggling to get wins. They don't have a number nine right now at all. I mean, Aubameyang does not look fancy or is not fancied by Potter. Kai Havertz has been a pretty much a disaster, definitely this season. Um, I mean, Felix he's been fine. He played pretty well against us, but other than that, he's been kind of poo in the league as well. Uh, Mudrick has been poo as well. So, I mean, you just keep going down. I think Chelsea have just been pretty much just to sum up their season dog water. Yeah. So, I guess you're feeling pretty confident. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm probably going to go, uh, uh, probably going to go two nil at Chelsea, to be honest with you. Two nil. If, if we're doing predictions. Two nil win. I... I mean, I like your, I like that. I'm going, I think another 1-0 uh, is what I'm going to sit at. Also, maybe I need to take notes. Do we need to start like keeping track of our predictions? I think we talked about it before. but Yeah, we had talked, we'll we've been nailing them lately, <laughs> but I think we both messed up with the Hoffenheim, but I mean, Hoffenheim should have been, it should not have been a 1-0, excuse yeah, me. I definitely didn't predict a 1-0 at 1-0 Hoffenheim. I would have went more goals there. I probably said 3-1 or something, I remember, but yeah. don't think I got that one right. Uh, but yeah, so again, Leipzig Friday, uh, 2.30 Eastern Time, Chelsea Tuesday, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And then uh, before we wrap up, I know there's it, not even news because it's not like fully confirmed yet. But Carver, did you want to run down this kind of like we had a little bit of update on Royce and maybe Kamada too? Yeah, so it looks like we're going to be reaching an agreement with Royce to extend. His contract is up at the end of this summer. Uh, the the news surrounding him for the last several months is if he is going to extend, the club is expecting him to take a significant salary cut, and that looks to be the case. Royce does want to stay, thankfully. I mean, that's 
what every uh, journalist and source is pointing to at the moment. Royce looks obviously very happy here and wants to continue his career here. So it looks like we're probably going to be reaching agreement very, very soon. Uh, looks like a one to two year deal max. I think a two year deal would be perfect um, to maybe have him lift the Meisterschale, if not this year, then in the coming years. Um, so happy to have him on board. Of course, I don't have to get into why Royce is vital for a team like this, but also you have Kamada who's also, I mean, contract also ends at the end of the summer, but this time for Frankfurt and he, or this transfer would, or the signing would be completely independent for the future of Bellingham. So it would not be a Bellingham replacement. There are different players. Um, I mean, Kamina would just be another, I would say a Dahoud replacement if, if you're going to go down that road of replacing anyone, but um, he's going to bring a whole lot of hell of a lot of dynamism to our midfield and uh, that's looking to be confirmed relatively soon as well. So two big signings here, of course, coming out would be on a free as well. So we're saving money, uh, just getting you more excited for the summer and we can continue to address a few other holes in the team and keep going. Where do you think coming uh, up fits in the system? Like, does he come in as a starter? Does he just give a, a step? I thought he was older, so he's, he's only 26. So, like, there could be a, a good few years plus out of him. But, like, where do you see him slotting in? And if, uh, I mean, maybe the Bellingham, if Bellingham goes, and do you see him taking that position? Because uh, we talked about Dehoud's not sticking around uh, because we want a, a six. But mm-hmm. I don't think he really fits that role. So, is he a Royce? Is he slotting in for Royce Bellingham? Or where do you see him playing exactly? <sighs> If I had to just, I guess, guess right now, I would probably say he would be another number eight in that four one four one, and then maybe push Brandt out, uh, excuse me, out wide. That way, you have that midfield trio of Chan dropping back, and then in front of him, Royce and Kamada to obviously progress the ball. This is if Bellingham leaves, um, and then you have Brandt out wide, and then Brandt can kind of go anywhere. He can cut inside. He can stay wide. He can uh, really go wherever. Uh, if Bellingham stays, whew, that's tough because I, I don't know who you bring out then. If, if for, you know, I don't know if Royce takes a back seat with that salary cut and kind of gets or plays a little bit more of like a, a role playing role uh, and Kamada gets to start. I'm not sure. But either way, I, again, another great problem for a coach to have add to that depth and, you know, helping out the team regardless. Um, I do want to talk about Bellingham now for a second because it, it's something. I haven't thought about yet because I think I've just, it's always been on my mind that Bellingham's probably leaving at the end of the year. But look how we're playing now. I know there a lot of talk was, or a lot of connection to Liverpool. But I mean, like we said, Dortmund's best team in 2023. What, what would it take, do you think, for him to stay? Does it come down to Bundesliga results? Is it a Champions League thing? What what do you see possibly playing out? Or what? Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know what I, my question is, but yeah. To be honest, I don't think it's a probably he's going to leave this summer. I, I really don't. I you look at other clubs around Europe, and it's like who can afford the asking price that we have right now? If I'm not wrong, I think Kale came out and, or at the very minimum, the you know the club's not going to let him go for like at least 130, and I think that's low balling, and I and I'm. Don't think it's an exaggeration whatsoever. He's worth more than that. But very, very few clubs in the world can afford that at the moment. And if it were a team like City, I mean, they have so many other players in in that sort of position at the moment. And Liverpool, they're not going to be able to afford that. There's no way in hell. And of course, like you meant... Go ahead. I was just going to say for Liverpool, I know they are looking for new investors. Um, so, and maybe that, and they desperately need guys in the midfield. So it's like, if they do get some investors coming in, that is yeah. a possibility. They, yeah. Liverpool 100% needs a player like Bellingham. That is like their dream. But unless there's some sort of insane, drastic overhaul and ownership at the club, and even then the values of the club of, you know, not really signing those kind of uh, players for those fees has never really been a thing over in Liverpool. So I, I really don't think that's going to happen this summer. And then just like you mentioned, nine games, nine wins. If there's one team in Europe right now that's convincing to be at or stay at, it probably would be Dortmund. Of course, as well, we haven't even talked about 
the extension or the salary increase, if there isn't, if there won't be an extension um, that we're putting on the table for Bellingham. I mean, there's been lots of reports in the last few weeks, maybe even months, saying that we are looking to give him another contract that would make him one of the highest paid uh, players in the Bundesliga. So, I mean, you have a winning team, you have the, you know the contract that suits your financial needs, you have a team that has a lot of cohesion and collectiveness and team spirit. You have a coach that believes in you and wants to and wants to build around you. You have endless talent going down the list, and and also you have players now that uh, who that are English as well that Bellingham kind of take under their wing, like JBG, and uh, who knows, you can continue maybe investing in other English youth prospects. So, I mean, I, I don't think it's as simple as Bellingham is good as gone, or even really the probability is that high. To be honest with you, I mean, I could be wrong, but that's just you know what I've been thinking these past few months. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it definitely helps. Like the position we're in now definitely helps and it makes it... Like there, There's always been, I think, the the thought or the connotation of, yeah, people, like we can develop, help players develop and then they can move on. Like whether that's been a strategy for every single player, every single young person we brought in um, or not, I think it's, it's there is a, perce- there's that perception there definitely. Uh, but like how we're playing now and the position we're in, like... I feel like we saw a lot of frustration from Bellingham last year. Like you, you saw him yelling at guys a lot. Yeah. I mean, a lot of that, I, the most vivid memory is him yelling at Schultz. So fine, yell at him all you want. <laughs> I think when that even happened, I was like, yeah, he was an idiot. Before everything happened too, um, it was the Rangers game. I remember it mm-hmm. a lot. Um, <laughs> but but it, you, you could just see this frustration because he was carrying the team. But now it's like, it's totally different. And I, I feel like we're just a, how we're playing now and, hopefully how we can keep progressing uh, makes it a a more desirable long-term plan and, and I don't know, a place you want to stay, um, which is exciting. And I, I think only helps, helps the, that <laughs> helps the building in situation, I guess. Yeah. So I, I, I think, yeah, Bellingham's got a good chance of staying here and whether or not he does, we're already investing into areas of, uh, similar roles, so I'm, I'm I'm happy with the business that Kale's been doing. I'm happy with the with the meals he's been cooking up in the kitchen. Uh, obviously, been getting some very smart signings as well. I can't remember if he was he might have been sporting director when we got Sule on a free, but either way, um, I mean these, he was, these. I don't think he had officially started yet, but he was definitely in and around. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm I love those sneaky signings. I mean, Dortmund are pretty notorious for being very. Uh, sneaky, very sexy, very um, very clever in the transfer market. I mean, of course, there are a few signings that you're like, eh, I don't know about that, but those are those are the outliers. I mean, for the most part, we are very uh, we our business is very conducted very well in the transfer market. I mean, the Rearson one, yeah, still yeah. a good one. I know he. Do you know what was he like sick? I don't know what happened this last week. It looks like uh, he had but, an eye injury, but I that's just I didn't read too much about it either. All right, he's had a couple of weird little things like he was sick and maybe this eye injury. But when he's played, he's played very well. So that's a yeah. good bit of business still. Um, before I officially say goodbye, I do know I, we talked about St. Louis and St. Louis's MLS team a lot, and I'm not not that I'm I'm not getting paid to plug them. <laughs> kind of, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not plugging them on purpose. I was just going to apologize because I know we have a lot of fan, uh, listeners from. Uh, like New York and Florida and Texas and all over the country and all over like in Germany too and all over Europe and all over the world. I'm just going to, I'll brag a little bit all over the world. So thank you all for listening. I'm not trying to make you a St. Louis fan. We're not a St. Louis uh, city podcast. We're not going to break down their games all the time. It's just very exciting what's going on in St. Louis right now. So I'm sorry if we're hyped and that's all I'll say on that. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, this is this is just everyone's dream here in the city for so long. We've we've really deserved an MLS club for decades now. We finally have it, and I think it's been run very very well. It's been created very very well. I love the project that's being built here. Uh, I can go on and on and on about just everything that I saw on Saturday too. I was incredibly impressed with so many different things about the club. But yeah, either way, I, one one little thing I will push back on. I am trying to convince some people to be a city fan. <laughs> St. Louis City fan, I mean. I said I'm not... I said something about being paid to convince people to be a City fan. Which, I mean, I technically... I do work... Not technically. I do work for the club. 
yeah. but they're not paying me. Dur- I mean, I do social media, so kind of I am paid to. Come I was going to say you kind of are, <laughs> but not Snake on this podcast. Oil salesman. <laughs> they're not an official sponsor of this podcast. <laughs> it audio cuts and it's just a, an ad for City. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah. On that note, I think uh, we're out of here. I'm sorry to force our our St. Louis fandom on you if you live in New York and especially if you support New York Red Bulls. We're not talking crap on them. Just the con, just the. I use connotation like three times in this podcast. I don't even know if that was the right word, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, anyways, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for listening. Thanks for all the reviews lately uh, and all the listens. If you've like told a friend about us, maybe that's how the word's getting out. I don't know what's happening. We're getting a lot of new listeners, and we really appreciate it. Said it last week, saying it again this week. Um, if you want to leave us a little review on Spotify, click that five stars. Or if you want to say something nice, you can do that on Apple Podcasts. If you got something mean to say. You can DM us or send us an email. I, and, I love uh, that it's just like a running joke now of pretty much every episode. <laughs> I don't want any negative comments in our uh, <laughs> on Apple Podcasts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, do all the things. You can, uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, Instagram or anything, we've got the link to everything in the description of this episode. And that is, that is it. My outro always takes forever. I'm sorry for that too. <laughs> Carver, I still can't see you. So I don't know if you're waving oh, or anything, but I'm I was just, just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. We'll talk See later. See ya.